I thoroughly enjoy when people have questions. Because you see, I had the same questions. Sometimes I still do. <laughs> but I question everything. But the thing that caused me to grow in my personal relationship with God was that I questioned everything because my name is Michael. And in Hebrew, the name Michael is Michael, which is a Hebrew sentence that says, I know it's the name Michael just sounds like one word, but it really has a few words in it. And it says, who is like unto God? And it's interesting is that in the Bible, we read about how Jacob was renamed Israel, governed by God, or you know, God using Jacob in a way that he would control him and, and use him for his own purposes. But always, like in Isaac with laughter and in all the different names of God that, or the names that people have been named, that God has always used some aspect of their life to manifest in them by their name. The same way that Emmanuel is the name of God and that's God in us. Well, for me, all that I just said simply means that I question things because who is like unto God has a question mark in it. It's one of the few words in Hebrew, Michael, that actually is a complete sentence in one word. And I always found that interesting because when I got saved, it was like a complete work of God in me. But anyways, the long and the short of it is, is that I so respect the fact that I questioned God on everything that I got the answers, you know, and I, I said, cool, <laughs> man, you know, it's great. But I was dumbfounded when I saw that other people didn't question God, but operated only by faith. Well, my respect for them is great, but I found that lots of times in their faith, they were going by feeling rather than fact. And so they didn't have an intelligent faith that they could demonstrate by proofs and evidences that their faith was genuine or real because sometimes they would change their faith and it would be like, oh, well, I don't feel so faithful. Well, but why? Because it's not feelings that you're operating by, it's faith. Well, the bottom line is that faith can be based upon fact. And the facts are found in what God said. So when God says something, we have it contained in the scriptures and we can look to them for our wisdom. But if we only choose to use logic without knowing the volume of the book and how it fits together, then there will be times where questioning it might cause more questions until you pursue it to the end of questioning. And in that place, you'll find God standing there. So don't be afraid to have questions and to question whatever it is you believe in. But keep going with the question until you get the answer. I did. And then God started speaking to me. Who would have known that my answers would come from God himself? And it would be revealed sometimes in scripture, but sometimes God would just tell me. And I'd just go, okay, good enough for me. <laughs> Maybe God will tell you something today that fits in your day. Looking at my utmost, as we know that God allows the circumstances of your life to come into conjunction and fit by working in them, in you, as he arranges your life to conform to the circumstances. And if his word comes in and it applies to you, then you know it's him speaking to you. Simple question of scientific proofs. You put the formula in and if it works and it fits, it's you. Bingo. And that's God speaking to you. He can do other ways, and he does speak direct at times. So, you know, the person who tells me, well, how do you know? I said, well, God told me. Well, what do you mean he told you? You in the Bible? Well, no. He kind of sometimes talks direct. <laughs> well, call me crazy. The brave comradeship of God. Actually, I read the wrong one. It is the big compelling of God. <laughs> well, behold, we go up to Jerusalem, 
Jerusalem stands in the life of our Lord as the place where he reached the climax of his Father's will. I seek not my own will, but the will of the Father which has sent me. That was the one dominating interest all through our Lord's life and the things he met with on the way, joy or sorrow, success or failure. They never deterred him from his purpose. He was sent for a reason, and he accomplished it. He steadfastly set his face to go to Jerusalem. The great thing to remember is that we go up to Jerusalem to fulfill God's purpose and not our own. Your purpose may have lots of different reasons, and you may state what they are, but if you don't live up to your stated reason, you haven't fulfilled your purpose. So, maybe, watch what you say so you accomplish what it is that you say you want to do. The great thing to remember is that we go up to Jerusalem to fulfill God's purpose and not our own, and naturally our ambition are our own in the Christian life. We have no aim of our own, but it is God who is choosing to direct our aim. There is so much said today about our decisions for Christ, our determination to be Christians, our decisions for this, that, or the other thing. But in the New Testament, it is the aspect of God's compelling us to do His will that is brought out. You have not chosen me. I have chosen you. We are not taken up into conscious agreement with God's purpose. We are taken up into God's purpose without any consciousness at all. God is at work in you, about you, around you, and hopefully with you, both to do it to will of His good pleasure. So, if you're involved in it, you participate with it. If you're not involved in it the way you think you are, He may be involving you irregardless of whether you know you're involved or not. We have no conception of what God is aiming at, and we go on as it gets more and more vague. God's aim looks like we're missing the mark because we are too short-sighted to see what he is aiming at. At the beginning of the Christian life, we have our own idea as to what God's purpose is. Oh, well, God told me to do this, and he told me to do that, and, you know, I, I heard that, like, you know, when I first got saved, and from that moment on, I never checked back with God. <laughs> Oops! <laughs> and off you went, steering to the left or the right on your own. I am meant to go here or there. God has called me to do this special work. And we go and do the thing. And still the big compelling of God remains. But, but, but God, I thought that was what you wanted me to do. Maybe there's more. The work we do is of no account. It is so much scaffolding compared to what the big compelling of God is. He took unto him the twelve. He takes us all the time. There is more we have got to do and to be and to become as of yet. Until the day you walk into heaven itself and you meet God face to face and you see Jesus in his place, the reality is you don't know every day what it is you should do, but I can tell you this, that each and every day, as we're told in Proverbs, that the direction of a man's heart is his own, but the footsteps are ordered of the Lord, God has a determination for you to take certain steps every day and that he can lead you in that way if you choose to follow it his way, your way, or go any way you feel like at the moment that you feel like it. The proof in the pudding, or the reality of who you are, will be determined by who you choose to let lead the way.